Welcome back, folks, to the Mail Right Show. This is episode 249. It's going to be an internal discussion between me and my great co-host, Robert Newman. We're going to be discussing the importance of Facebook groups and how they can you can use them to p- promote your own Facebook page and get loads of local um, activity on your page for free. And also we're going to be talking about how to use Facebook Live as a marketing tool to build up your personal brand in your local area and how to do one. So, Robert, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? I would love to. So my name is Robert Newman. I am uh, a blogger, a real estate marketing tech founder. Um, I blog about uh, other real estate technologies and uh, pull back the curtain on how effective they are, who they're effective for. You can find all that out at inboundrem.com and I've been doing it for 13 years. That's great. And I'm the founder of MailRite. We've been around for the past five years. Um, We basically use the power of Facebook um, to get you quality leads and much, much more. If that sounds interesting, go to the MailRite website, book a free demo, go to the About Us page and you can book a free demo with me and I can show you how Mel Wright can help you become a more profitable real estate agent. That sounds great, doesn't it? So let's get into it. Facebook groups. What if you what knowledge have you got to give to our beloved listeners and viewers, Robert? About hey, this. You you disabled the screen sharing. For this for this oh, one, right. for this show I'd like you to, to activate it. No, I didn't disable it. it it's, um, it's a new feature on that uh, Zoom to make it more secure. I've got a click to give you access. access. I got you. Okay. All right. I would, not, so, I, would not, I would not do that, you know, plan to do that at all, actually, uh, Robert. Okay. Can you see my screen? I can. Okay. So for those of you who are listening, I'm going to walk you through what we're talking about. So I was, John and I had a guest this morning and uh, unfortunately that guest had an emergency and we, John had two minutes to tell me, hey, we're going to do a show, just the two of us. And he's like, what do you want to talk about? And the funny thing was, I really wasn't prepared. I I didn't have anything to talk about. And I was looking at my screen and I realized that what I was looking at was a Facebook group that I belong to. Uh, I belong to uh, the Wailopo Success Community. And up on my screen, I had some numbers that the founder of the company had shared with his group. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I spend an awful lot of time in Facebook groups. And one of my most successful clients talks consistently about sharing his personal videos, his family and lifestyle videos inside Facebook groups. And while nobody's going to be really engaged in every single platform that you decide to work on, some of you use Facebook. Some of the people listening to this show use Facebook. And for those people, if you're realtors, and you probably are because you're listening to this show, then you really want to think about where are you spending your time and maybe leveraging a little bit differently. The way that the client that I have leverages Facebook without really taking any of his extra time is when he does family videos that are kind of mundane. Like he he had a video of, of a bonfire out in the backyard during COVID and he shared it to all of his Facebook groups, which included, by the way, about five that he considers to be relevant for real estate. Now, you might be wondering, how do you find five Facebook groups that are relevant for real estate? And here's what he did for those of you. Are these, are these kind of local groups like around? I'm about ready. To, you're stealing my thunder here. I'm about ready, I'm about ready to show. <laughs> I, would, I would never do that, would I, Robert? <laughs> so what, he did, what you do is, so he's in Middletown, Delaware. Okay. And when you look at what, so I just searched on Facebook, that simple term, Middletown, Delaware, and John's looking at it right now. And now you get some groups, you get the city, which is up here and you get the village community, which is right here. Okay. 506 members, five posts a day. 
And of course, this is my client in Middletown. All right. So he's also belongs to another Middletown group. Uh, and let's just look at Middletown Delaware News. And folks, you'll be able to watch this. If you want to go and watch and listen, you can go to the, U the Mel Wright YouTube channel and it will be up. Um, I normally post that first, actually, but you'll be able to see all this and follow us if you want to. Correct. So here's another interesting thing. The, this, the Middletown transcript is what would be considered a hyper-local paper, super small, little paper that very few people would pay attention to. However, on Facebook, this is a wildly powerful place to start looking. Now, this isn't a group, it's a page. So we're talking about groups, but guess what? When we like this page, when we go to this page, oftentimes little papers like this do allow you to post on their page for free. It has 14,000 people that like it. Middletown is only a town of about 45,000. So when you start looking at how many people in Middletown, pretty much every adult that lives in Middletown has liked this page, which means that when you post to this page, you have a very good shot at getting in front of the 70% 70 70 of the people in Middletown that have a Facebook page. And you can do all that without spending any money my favorite part of the strategy. Now that's a page strategy, but what the other well, part of the well, strategy? Well, I, think, I think what you've got to clarify here, though, is what you would paste on that page. I personally wouldn't post the latest house that I've I've got to sell on the market. It would be like that bonfire um, video that your client posted that's the type of stuff i would post there or what do you disagree um excellent question but i'm i'm going to stick with the thread that i started here yeah he's not he's not going to allow me to do what i did to him last week so forgive me forgive me guys because you can't see this but when you're doing a search in facebook for those of you that have tuned in in youtube you're going to see a whole bunch of categories or as people me and me and technology and john as well they're really filters. They're just filtering out your searches for you. And so one of the filters is groups. And I, I wasn't even using the groups filter yet. So I've now started to use the group filter. And if I do Middletown and take out the news, because I just did the same search in the group, if I just do Middletown, Delaware, and I do groups, now you get to see the power of groups in Middletown because there's many of them. And you can see how many posts a day are taking place like when you see 1,100 posts, even though it's a flea market, that's an interesting thing. That, that's people buying and selling stuff in Middletown. Obviously, John is correct about content. You're not going to put your homes there. However, when you see MOT res residence, Middletown Village, the Mil Middletown Delaware Connection, Middletown Township, the Middletown MOT Business, every single one of these groups would be relevant for a realtor. Every single one. There's not one in here that it wouldn't be like a prospective place for you to join your community on Facebook. Now, in terms of, of so, so that's groups. That's how to find them. And you should be able to use them for all of, so this is Middletown. This is my client, but I, he, he lives in a fairly, Delaware is not what most of us would consider to be a major metro area. So what if you're like me and you live in Los Angeles County? Well, I live in Van Nuys, which is a very, very small section of, of, uh, of uh, Los Angeles. But you can see here that there's still groups, not as many, by the way. Middletown is a better place, actually, for Facebook than... Van Nuys, because LA doesn't have the same sense of community that smaller cities and towns do. So you're gonna to have to get a little bit more creative. All of these groups that I have are buy, sell, and trade groups. And these probably aren't great for real estate. So, and, and I know you guys can't see this, some of you that are listening to the show. So I'm looking at a list of groups that is not necessarily the very best thing for real estate. Cause it's a lot of like flea markets and trade, you know, 
trade and kind, that kind of thing. And then there's a group called Cruising Van Nuys Boulevard. That doesn't sound very appealing to me or very... So what's your advice about what kind of groups that a local agent should be looking at joining? So I think that in bigger cities, so, so definitely all groups related to the community. You know, Middletown is a very active community. Um, an interesting thing, John, is that if you're lucky enough to live in the South, like Texas, I know for a fact that there's lots of communities that are surrounding football in Texas. That's just an example. I'm hoping that you as a local in whatever area that you're in, like if you're in Reno, I would imagine that some of the community activities there are going to be related to water sports. So you get involved in what the community is involved in. Well, um, there's, when it comes to Reno, and I think this would apply, is that um, obviously there's um, a lot of hiking. So there's a lot of um, groups about hiking. There's a lot of groups about um, skiing. But also um, in August, there's a lot of events like there's the balloon races there's the hot august nights and there's also in august something called art town that um that's been running for a number of years which um is uh organization a non-profit organization that sets up um various art orientated events in august but actually um their facebook community runs for the whole year and there's a lot of those type of monthly events and that's the type of thing i, I think you should be trying to look at to join as a real estate agent what do you reckon robert i think that's a good idea and i think that uh i found an answer you kind of have to do, for those of you who are watching, you kind of have to do what I just did, which is you go down the list and you see what you think would apply. So in Van Nuys, there's a channel about small businesses and there's a channel about events. And all of those, I think, are relevant for real estate agents. Yes, definitely. Basically, you want to be part of your community. And at, at the heart of it, guys, every single one of you that's listening, no exceptions, you're an independent business owner. Even those, the, those of you that are lucky to have salaries, you're all independent business owners, every single one of you. So don't think that you can't join small business groups because you can and you should. Um, now, John wanted to talk a little bit about Facebook Live. I, I could spend a lot more time talking about groups. I think they're an amazing way to connect with your community online. Also, also you find a lot of groups, um, find wine groups. You find groups uh, about art, you know, um, architecture. That, that's a definite to join, depending on the area that you live in. Um, you find groups that talk about restaurants and eating out. That's something definitely you want to join. They're, they're normally in most areas, um, when you do a search like this, there, there's, a, there's a, normally a half a dozen that, you can, that are non-brainer that you should join, isn't there, Robert? Yeah. And there's, of course, real estate groups, too, which I, so I wasn't sticking with the super traditional ideas, but I just did the search for those of you who are watching and listening. I did a search called Van Nuys Real Estate, and I'm getting a group run by LandCentury.com that has 4,800 posts a day. So it's probably people posting listings for buyers to look at, but that's a lot of activity in that group. So there's lots of groups related specifically to real estate Um and I don't know if there's going to be any buyers in that group. Not really. But I still don't think it's a bad idea to connect with local real estate agents, trade referrals, things like that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of agents that get referrals off Active Rain, which is just a blogging platform for realtors. And you would think, oh, I'm not going to get any business. But a lot of, lot of agents that I talk to get two, three transactions a year because they're getting referrals from other bloggers that they know on active rain who are other real estate agents. So actually it does generate business for most of the, like most of the agents that are active on it. Um, so, and, I, and just to finish off before we go for a break folks is that I would personally, um, is resist posting straight away. You know, you find a group and it's, it's, I think it's in us all to actually post straight away. I actually would advise you not to do that. I would find, you know, spend a little bit of time and find the groups 
that um, that's got the most activity, which you think you could be a member of and get the most benefit of, and then just spend a few days actually reading content in those groups. And um, every group's got its own kind of feel, and um, it, it's really quite easy just to go into the group and just be slamming some posting and you would have been better off to spending a few days sit, reading other people's material and then making a judgment call about what you're going to post on that particular group would you agree with that robert i would i would Just, definitely agree with that we're going to go for our break we're coming back and we're going to be talking about facebook live we'll be back in a few moments folks We're coming back. We, we've had a great discussion about Facebook groups. I think that was fantastic what we covered there, really, because it, it really is a powerful resource, totally free, and a lot of agents aren't doing that, what we discussed in the first half, aren't they, Robert? That Yes, it's totally free. They're not doing it, and, and I, I really like that recommendation, John, for – my favorite part of that recommendation, as you're the bigger the city, the harder you have to work and the harder it is to connect with people that are in the group, I feel, because I have a hard time connecting with people online because it's a huge city and people have their defenses up. It's just, it's just a different feel. Whereas, no joke, I've, and I've watched him do this. Ray is getting hundreds of comments um, from other Middletown residents on pictures of his kids that he's putting in and he's not he's not trying to market at all he's just saying hey we're dancing around the fire and he's got it you know part of his profile is hey i'm a realtor so he gets all this activity around him and being a realtor when uh when he's doing social po like like personal posts on these groups that only works in communities that really view themselves as a community and if they do which, which tends to be in the smaller places, the South, the Midwest, certain places here on the West Coast, but not like I'm talking like the more rural West Coast cities like Salem and other places like that where it's not as big, Eureka, um, Delano, stuff like that. Like if you're in any of these smaller communities that definitely view themselves as a community, then, then you should look on Facebook and see if people are talking to each other about what's happening because I think they are. And I think that would be a great way for you to connect with many, many people inside your community for free instantaneously. Yeah. Well, we're going to start talking about, um, that was great, uh, Robert. We're going to talk about live video, obviously because of the virus and um, everything we're facing, um, being able to do live video conference calls has become a lot more important to people. And also, um, we're probably going to do either an episode when we don't have a guest about how, what are the best programs to do live conference calls with, with okay. clients and potential clients, because I think that's probably going to be helpful. But in this part of, our sh uh, of the second half of the show, I'll be talking about actually using live video on Facebook to promote yourself properties that you might be viewing and want to promote so how do you actually do a live video on facebook well obviously if you're if you're using the iphone um and the facebook app on it it's really very easy you, you can do it with the native um program and you can also do the same um, with the desktop program, um, it's not totally very feature rich. Um, so you might want to use a third party service, um, especially um, if you might be considering pushing that video to multiple platforms or you just want more control and be able to, um, to have more tools and bells and whistles. Now, um, the depending if you're on um, Mac or PC, um, one of the most popular free programs 
that works on Mac and PC is a program called OBS, which is Open Broadcaster Software. Um, don't worry, I'll have the link in the show notes, folks. <laughs> uh, um, and that's our open source tool. It's been around for years. And you're probably going to use this if you're not going to use your cam, your um, camera, um, your camera on your iPhone or Android. Um, let's say you are either wanting to use a webcam or even um, a mirrorless camera, one of the more cheaper um, cameras on the market or a cam recorder. Um, if you're looking to go a little bit more professional. Now, obviously, if you're looking around a house, um, there's still um, there's still alternatives to actually using your iPhone, but um, the modern iPhone um, now, the 11, has, I think it has about three cameras on it, and um, literally the quality is pretty superb. You're probably going to need to get um, a grip um, so you can pan around the house that you're trying to promote without getting too much shake and you'll probably be better off um, one of the things with the iPhone is that um, it's jackless it requires bluetooth so you on the more modern phone you're going to get a better picture but you're probably going to have to look at a bluetooth microphone um set up so you get better sound the sound and recording you that you're going to get from the iphone is going to be okay um because you're you're inside Obviously, if you're outside, it becomes a lot more problematic because you're going to get a lot of wind and general sound interference. But internally, it's not going to be bad, but you're probably, it's, probably, it's probably going to be one of the first things that you should be looking at to improve your presentations, funny enough, which is sound. So like with the modern iPhone, like I say, it's Bluetooth only. Um, if you go for um, a lot, also a lot of people, um, they get old iPhone 6 and there's a number of sound recording programs that you can put on both. And they get iPhone 6 that takes a jack um, and they use that um, to record with. Um, Another way you can do it is um, get um, a external camera that allows you to record sound with a jack. And there's a number of those. The, um, a couple of cheap ones I'll probably will put in the show notes. So it's most strange. So that that's the strange, I would say difficulty, but um, there are a number of reasonably, they used to be very expensive um, Bluetooth external microphones, but they have gone down in price quite a bit, actually, Robert. So I'll, I'll put some links in the show notes. So we start off with sound with your phone. Um, now, when you, if you want to do kind of a presentation like we're doing, um, you're probably, um, you could still use your iPhone and use a stand um, and it would probably be fine. Um, and you then would use OBS to broadcast or depending on um, what platform you are on, there's... Um, there's a number of tools that you could use. Um, but um, if you're using, if you're looking at the Mac, um, I've forgotten its name, but the next one up, um, there's a tool, a software tool 
that costs about $29 a month. Um, and I forgot what it's called, unfortunately. Um, another one, but I'll make sure it's in the show notes. And basically it's around 19, I think they have two levels and it's, I think it's called Ecamm. It's called Ecamm and um, it's really very flexible when they two, two do two version and it's a, a monthly recurring payment. Um, I think the basic one, if you're on a Mac, it will work great. Um, another one you could you look at yeah, that's very popular on the PC side is vmix um okay. that, that's very popular on the pc side and then there's some paid higher end paid ones there's a, one particularly um that comes to mind for the for the mac um it's the same people that do screen flow which is a editing bit of software for the mac um, it's the same people that do that, and it, it's around four hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So the price has jumped up quite a bit. Gotcha. But but I think if you're looking not to use the um, internal phone, either when you're mobile or you can put it on a stand and use it, and launch you, which is totally fine. Launch you sort out the sound. The sound. But if you want to go a little bit higher in picture quality and flexibility, you could either look at OBS, um, Ecamm, if you're on a Mac, or the um, VMAT, if you're on a PC, um, v, VMix. Um, there that would be my recommendation. And the last recommendation that you can use is you can actually use Zoom, and we use Zoom. We use Zoom webinar, but if you're if you're if you're just bought Zoom for your video conferencing, you it on the basic um, program, which is designed for like I say video conferencing rather than webinars, and me and Robert use it for our um, podcasting because the actual sound quality compared to Skype is a lot of better in my opinion and it's versatile as a tool when it comes to podcasting um you can use the basic paid program and it will allow you to push to facebook live and uh, you know you're probably buying it because you're having to do a lot more virtual conferencing calls anyway so you can actually use that as your main desktop tool to push to facebook how's, how's how am i doing robert you're doing good so for those of you that may be in the middle of middle of this because that was a, that was a pretty long explanation john and i are talking about doing facebook live and you know honestly john is running that this part of the show because i only use live for this for this particular cast that we're on i have every intention of trying to leverage live at some point. And I'm building up a Facebook group of, of uh, my like prospects and clients and just real estate professionals. And at some point I'm gonna start doing independent lives. For, so I'm learning from you right now, John. I'm learning right along with everybody else about what to do and how to do it because I don't know about equipment. I only have my desktop set up. I've never done live via a mo I, I tried it once on Instagram just for kicks or a couple times. And I never got very good at it. Um, I, but I strongly believe that it's a good tool to, to look at and to use. That's why we're talking about it. And not to mention, regardless of what I think, there's almost a, a certainty that some of the people listening to this show are going to be affected by a second lockdown. And that, at that point, it becomes a, a question of communicating with people effectively. And more and more people, like the amount of people that are requesting for me to do Zoom meetings and Google Hangout meetings that never requested it is almost... A hundred percent. Like I've never had people doing that with me before when they set their appointments and not everybody's doing it. The world has changed right in front of our eyes in terms of what expectations are. And part of those expectations without question 
are what are we, how are we going to communicate? And yeah. live is a, is a viable option. Yeah. Also, I've just gone through some of the software and using it because most people um, with their phone technology now, the picture video quality that you're going to get out, you can just buy a, a, a stand that puts it in front of you when you're doing on your desktop setup. And then you can buy a grip and I'll put in the show notes some grips that I recommend and also some YouTube resources that I've, um, I believe in that um, give great advice around camera purchase and some of the other um, technology. Like I, like I said, I think sound, funny enough, sound is the, um, when it comes to um, something like the iPhone or a really modern Android phone from Samsung, it's actually the sound quality that you should be looking at. And then you can, after you, if you want to go to the next stage, there, there's a ton of options. But I also get a lot of agents say, what should I be talking about? And it, um, you should be talk, obviously talking about properties that you're representing. You should be also talking about other people's properties that interest you. Um, it's a great way of showing that you really um, know you, your local market you know what's going on and really doing reviews of other hot properties that are on the market is a great way of proving your knowledge and that you'll really understand the local market actually doing just general um, descriptions or face to face about how the local market is going and the, the full thing and it's not up for everybody, but you could consider people are really funny enough. People are always interested in property and they're always interested having an insight about other professions and having just doing um, periodic, more and more periodic snap, snapshot of your daily life of a, a professional real estate agent really works actually robert you i'm know. gonna say i'm gonna add one thing in there john so i agree with everything you said but i'd like to add on the following mm. um first of all i've mentioned his name a thousand times on the show it's going to be 1001 christoph too is doing something interesting where he is he is getting no, when the, are you gonna get him on the show robert i actually have to ask him at some point that's what that's what i'm gonna do um so Christoph is, is like... Uh, I feel like I already know him, Robert, so you're going to have to get him on the show. All right, fair enough. I'll, I'll send an email, like, right now uh, so while, we're, while we're doing the show, so that, that way I remember. I'm, but being rude. I'm, being, I'm being rude here, but I'm only teasing, Robert. I, I, I. He's, um, he's talking a lot about, um, about doing... Um, the things he's doing for COVID, like, like he's talking about it a lot and he's showing it too on video. He's doing live videos and he's in a mask and he's, he's touring properties in a mask. And I think that sends a real clear message to all of his customers that he's taking COVID seriously, but he's still showing real estate. And so I feel like that's a good way to go in terms of how you're going to communicate, like part of your messaging should be, talking about the pivots that you're having to make as a business person during the days of COVID. Yeah, I think that's great insight. But I think just, you know, it's not for everybody, but other people, but um, increasingly, this is, especially when you're a new agent in your first, second year, um, this is just a great way of promoting yourself, getting yourself in the mind of your local community and building up your credibility that you're a bit different than all the other agents that you really understand the local market and you understand modern marketing technology it's just a great way and as long as you keep at it the investment you're gonna have to have the phone anyway a decent phone anyway um like i say with a modern iphone it's just the um you bluetooth microphone setup but i'd say that's gone down in price and you can just use your phone for a long time before you have to look 
a, a, a GoPro. GoPro is really good for when you're out roaming, um, and you can use it on a stand. That you know you'd be looking at uh, probably a better quality of video to a little bit, and you can also look at 4K. But 4K, um, I would keep off that for the time being because it's very resource hungry. Um, um, and but just doing these live videos, you, you've got no editing. It just goes out there. And it's just a great way of people seeing what you're doing. So, so um, I think we've discussed two great ways that you can use Facebook almost totally free to really promote yourself in in this episode Robert what do you yeah. think no I think I think we've covered we've covered two things and I love the idea of us talking a little bit later on another show about various tools we should and I'm going to bone up on live and I'm going to come back more like well more research and 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 test it out myself and start to leverage live in a different way so that we can have better conversations with our audience about it because i think it's incredibly important i think that groups are incredibly important and even if we were wrong previously they're going to become important as certain parts of the country get shut down again well i know if i was an actual um, real estate agent i would be doing as many facebook live videos as i could i would and i'll also be using the power of facebook groups when it comes to my local community and the two things go, what the lovely thing is, folks, is the two things really going hand in hand, doing a load of video, doing a load of video lives and pushing that to your group groups that you're a member on is a powerful way of marketing yourself. And I don't think you, you, you will find any other podcast in the real estate area that you will be finding the kind of content that me and Robert are talking about right. at the present moment. I, I haven't, I listen to other people's podcasts and I don't hear uh, many conversations that are pointing out some of the free morphologies that we're discussing that can really make a difference to the uh, real estate agent's business, Robert. Yeah, I agree. All right. We're going to cut it off now, folks. Hopefully we'll be back with a guest or another internal discussion. And please give us some feedback about how you think. Just go to the Mel Wright Facebook page and just leave us some feedback about what you like me and Robert to be discussing. Are we doing a good job? Are we discussing stuff that you are really interested in? Just tell us on the, on the Mel Wright Facebook page what you think of the show and give us some feedback and um, we'll try and cover subjects that you really want to know about. We'll be back next week with another great show. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Bye.